To continue our noodle series, we'll be making beef chow mein. Hey Busy Bees, it's Zung, and welcome back to Honeysuckle where we make the friendliest recipes for Busy Bees like you. So this month we're doing a noodle series and you guys chose beef chow mein for your choose your own adventure. In our Pad Thai video, I asked what video you would like to see next, shrimp zoodle, shrimp scampi zoodles, or beef chow mein, and you guys voted on my IG stories and in the comments below. Um, we're gonna do another choose your own adventure for the next video, so stay tuned till the end. If you guys are excited for noodle series, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you love chow mein. We'll go ahead and get started with our sauce. So if you notice, in a lot of Asian noodle recipes, they start with the sauce separately so that they can adjust and make sure the sauce is just perfect when they add it to the noodles. Here, I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of oyster sauce. If you're not familiar with oyster sauce, it's used in a lot of Chinese and Vietnamese cooking. It has a little bit of saltiness, like, like a very unique saltiness, um, and a little bit of sweetness in there, and it's just very balanced. If you like to cook a lot of Asian food, Chinese or Vietnamese, I highly recommend you get oyster sauce. You can find it at any grocery store these days. I'll add it to my bowl. It's like a very salty Asian ketchup. <laughs> All right, next I have one tablespoon of soy sauce. Then I have two teaspoons of sesame oil. If you like a more pronounced sesame oil flavor in your chow mein, go ahead and add one tablespoon. But I feel like this is pretty balanced. And then to round out our sauce, I have one teaspoon of brown sugar and two tablespoons of water. Now, since I like my sauce to be a little bit spicy, I'm gonna add black pepper for that like back of your throat spicy kick. It's not too spicy, but it's just perfect. I'll add about half a teaspoon here. My grinder grinds it pretty finely, so instead of using black pepper powder in a traditional recipe, I'm just using this here. But if you wanna use the really finely milled pepper powder, you can find it at any Asian market. Now we'll give it a mix, mix, mix. I'll just stir it until the sugar is dissolved and the oyster sauce has thinned out. All right, the sauce looks good, and at this point, go ahead and give your sauce a taste to make sure it's to your liking. Make any adjustments as needed. So keep in mind, it's gonna be a little salty, but once you mix it with the noodles and the beef and everything, it'll be just right. All right, I'm gonna set this aside and then I'm gonna show you my noodles. So here I have some noodles that I've already cooked off according to the package's direction. This is just your traditional chow mein noodles, egg noodles, that's super thin. And I have a story. I went to the Korean market and I bought um, chow mein noodles that was eggless. When I cooked it off, it became super mushy and broke. So this is take two on filming beef chow mein. I just didn't have a Ranch 99 or um, an, a different Asian market in the area and I couldn't find this exact same brand. So if you guys are looking for chow mein noodles, really try to make it out to an Asian market, uh, particularly maybe Ranch 99 or somewhere that has a plethora of different noodle varieties. This one is the one I used and even if you do find egg noodles, chow mein noodles, make sure you find one that says steamed chow mein. That's when the noodle is pre-steamed in the package and it just has a more chewy texture. It's really good. I'm really happy with this. I tested it yesterday and it was perfection. One more note, because I'm gonna be tossing the chow mein in the wok later, it's gonna be cooking a little bit more. I made sure to undercook my noodles so that they don't get super mushy. All right, so now that the noodles are ready, let's get cooking with our beef chow mein. So for this recipe, I'm gonna be using a big wok. If you don't have a wok, just use your largest frying pan and it'll work too. And then for this one, I'm using my gas stove and I'm just gonna light it. Use the hottest heat that you have. So if you have a large coil burner, use that one. If you have like one of those big ceramic, um, 
I used to have one of those. Those ceramic burners, use that one, but just make sure that you use the biggest and highest heat that you have available. So the cooking process is gonna go super fast. You're basically quick searing the meat and then just flash cooking the vegetables so they maintain a very nice crunch. For the meat, I'm using half a pound of sirloin here that I've cut myself. Make sure that you cut against the grain so the meat doesn't get very chewy. When you cut like with the grain, the meat tends to be super chewy and inedible almost. So I like cutting my meat about this size. So in my wok, I'm gonna add about one to two tablespoons of oil and let it get really hot. I'm using avocado oil here because it has a really high smoke point and the heat's gonna be really high. I'll let it get hot and then I'm gonna add my meat. I'll season it with a little bit of salt to taste, quickly sear it, and then I'll add three cloves of garlic that I've already minced, one teaspoon of grated ginger, continue searing the meat and cooking it up, then I'll toss in two and a half cups of broccoli. For the broccoli, I like using broccolette because it just has more flavor and I like it better, the structure of it. One whole carrot that I've thinly sliced, half an onion that I've also thinly cut. Keep tossing it, keep mixing it so nothing sticks to your wok. I'm cooking this for about one to two minutes until the vegetables are just barely cooked through. Now I'll add our noodles and then our sauce. Keep tossing it, keep mixing it until the noodles absorb the sauce. And when the sauce is nice and bubbly, that's it. We're done. And that is it. That came together, everything, prepping, putting the sauce, cooking the noodles in less than 20 minutes. The noodles, I only cooked it for 10 seconds and then everything came together so easily, right? Would you guys try this at home? All right, I'm going to serve this now and we'll give it a try. So this makes about three to four servings of chow mein. I have two bowls set out because beef chow mein is, believe it or not, Nate's favorite Asian dish. Every time we go to like a pho restaurant, he will look for chow mein instead of ordering pho. I'm happy that I can make it at home now too. Get some nudes in there. And then for the toppings, I like to spoon it and then put it on top just so it's pretty. And finally, to garnish, some cilantro. So even though this is beef and broccoli chow mein, I added in a carrot to give it some color and it really pops. It makes it look so colorful and fresh. Mm, I can't wait to try it. Got a little bit of everything in there. I'm going in. Mm. Wow, that was good. The meat was seared to perfection. It wasn't chewy at all. The noodles were perfectly al dente. And then the broccoli and carrots in there still had its crunch. I like my vegetables still with the crunch when I'm, whenever I'm cooking anything, really. Man, that was so good. I hope you guys like this beef chow mein recipe. Comment below if you guys have ever made beef chow mein before and if you would give this recipe a try. I was thinking for our next choose your adventure, you guys did give shrimp scampi zoodles a lot of love, you did, and I will make it eventually, but I kind of wanted to throw a different idea into the mix. Would you rather see shrimp scampi zoodles for the next recipe, or would you rather see kimchi mac and cheese? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> Comment below and let me know which one you would choose, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on Sunday for our next noodle recipe. Happy March Noodle Madness, bye!
feel that.